Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can everybody hear okay this morning? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'd like to welcome everybody here this morning. We're glad to see everybody here as we as we worship God through His Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Um, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and just do announcements? Okay, just a few announcements. Don't forget that we have, and they're right here in your program, your bulletin. Don't forget that we have Bible Study Fellowship on Tuesdays at 10 o'clock in the small hall, which is right down here. Everybody's welcome. We're in the book of John, chapter 1. Maybe this week we might get into chapter 2. Maybe. And then also on Thursdays, in the same room at the same time, 10 o'clock, we have our weekly prayer meeting. And that has been really great and beneficial, and prayers are being answered, and we would love to have you there. We'd love to have you there. The more people, the better. You know, Peter was in prison, and they were praying all night for him, and the apostle Peter, he was in prison, and they were praying all night for him because they were going to, the, the, the king was going to kill him. Well, God came in the middle of the night and, and brought Peter out. And they, they were so shocked, even though they were praying for it, they were so shocked when Peter was knocking at the door. They're like, yeah, right. <laughs> That's us, guys. That's us. We've got to pray. We've got to believe. So join us on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. And then help us spread the word. Uh, pick up some of these cards and hand them out to your friends and family. Or put them on the, the cork board at the at the store, you know, they have those places where you put business cards, hang, hang it there, get people here. You never know what God will use to bring somebody to, the, to Jesus. And then we always need uh, volunteers, and we have sign-up sheets right there behind you on the table with a green tablecloth. We need greeters and people to bring cookies and people to do special music. And the special music sign-up sheet is people are doing good, people are signing up, but we only have one column being filled up, and we need two people, or you need to do two songs that week. You're welcome to do two songs the week you have special music. You don't have to, but you're welcome to. But don't be afraid to fill in that second spot, okay? Yeah, or or we'll have to just call somebody up on ra at random. <laughs> <laughs> you <don't want> <laughs> Dennis? <laughs> That's what everybody's saying. So... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's great. Um, so yeah, you know, if you, if you have a voice, or if you just have, you know, if, if you just have a calling to sing something that day, you know, come on up. Turn this up. Is that better? Okay. I think we're up as loud as we can go. Uh, I'll just talk louder. <laughs> um, now we're at the part where we like to ask if anybody has a prayer request this morning they'd like to share with us. My friends are traveling here to visit me from Colorado, and they left this morning, and if anybody's watched the weather lately, they've had a ton of snow. So I just want to pray for safe travel that they get down here uh, in a timely fashion. I, I'm not sure how long it took to get out of their driveway. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's keep the travelers in prayer today for sure. Anyone else? Yes. Our neighbor, Ray, is under a doctor's care tonight. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, for sure. Yeah, and yeah, we're missing a few people here this morning, so we'll just keep everyone in prayer this morning. Anyone else? And <clears throat> by the way, I just want to say I love to see all of your faces. It just brings joy to me to know that we're all here for the same reason. Um, so thank you for coming, really. <laughs> Mabel touches my heart. <clears throat> um, and also, if, if, does there anyone else have a praise, uh, prayer request this morning? Okay. How about a how about a praise report? Well, I just praise God that He's He's got us all here safe and sound this morning um, to hear His word. I got a I got a prayer request. 
I have a friend named Robin, and we oh, actually yeah. worked together um, eight years ago, which seems like yesterday. But I've told some of you about her, but she had a really bad car wreck back in May, and she broke both her so shoulders, her ankle, ribs, all kinds of stuff, knocked her teeth out, and um, so she had to be in the hospital for two months, and then she was in rehab for several months, and she's a physical therapy assistant, so she became the patient. You know, she's used to being the one walking people, and they were walking her. Well, I lost contact with her. Um, she's been healing from all that, and I lost contact with her and contacted a friend, and the friend found out that she had a seizure, broke uh, part of her back, and is in the hospital. So I actually got to see her on the phone yesterday. We did FaceTime. So I, I got to see her, and I was like, Robin, do you have your makeup on? And she's like, yes, nothing's changed. And she's sitting there in full makeup. I thought she was dying, you know. But she's sitting there in full makeup with her hair all done and her nails all done. She's as cute as she can be. But keep her in your prayer. She just keeps having all these things happen to her. And she has an elderly mother who just turned 95, 93 or 95. And then a disabled brother who's in the nursing home. So all this burden, and, and she's just really tired and wore out. And so just please pray for Robin that she would be healed and, and that she would seek the Lord through all this. And she would continue to seek the Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. That's great. Um, <clears throat> anyone else have anything to share they'd like to share this morning? Praise the Lord, what God's done for them. Okay. Um, I, I'll let you know this, too, in our, our, our prayer meeting, uh, we do take the list of prayer requests, and we, we pray for those people, and we're praying at the top of that list that all of these prayers for all of these people turn into praise reports, and so that, that list is kind of growing right now, so the praise, the, the prayer request list is you know, several pages, and, and and the praise the praise report is 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 building. So we praise God for that. He's he's working. He's healing. He's he's touching lives, and he's doing his job. So we praise him for that. Um, <clears throat> so before we have special music this morning, let's let's bow our heads and, and pray. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for for everyone here today. I pray for those who are traveling. I pray for those who are, who are uh, still ill or coming down with illness. Uh, Father, uh, we know that you're the healer, the almighty healer. All things can be done. You say, ask and you shall receive. So, Father, we're asking today that you put your hand of mercy and healing up across this park and, and for all the families and uh, friends uh, that are and loved ones of those in this park, Father. So we just thank you. We thank you in advance. Uh, and I just thank you for everyone here today, Father. Put a special blessing on all of them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we say, Amen. We have victory in Jesus. So, no further ado, I'd like to ask uh, Mabel and, and Fuzz to do their special music for us this morning. So let's welcome them this morning.
sing? Does anybody does any does anybody want to sing? That was great. <laughs> well, we're gonna throw a song at you here, hopefully. I mean, I have we have I have no idea. Well, let's just play the one that we have. Hey, there. we didn't go over that. We didn't go all the way through that one. So, I mean, okay. Before we go. Well, that was beautiful. It was. The one, the original. Yeah. Thank God I'm free. Have you ever heard that song? Thank God I'm free. Sing along if you know the words. You have over 800 million people. Get through this. 800 million people. Yeah. Here we go. You can't go wrong. Let's see what happens. Why is it not playing? I don't know. Down a long, lonely road My heart was so heavy In sin I sank low Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful love I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through His saving power Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out. He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God. That's right. Like a bird out of prison. Prison, yeah. That's taken his flight. Like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Like a poor wretched beggar That's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through His holy name Thank God I am free, free, free From this world of sin Washed in the blood of Jesus I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Praise God. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. He'll do it. I found out. He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free. All right. Yeah. That's with no practice. So <laughs> We're naturals. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can sing. That's right. Anybody. See? Just do it. Just play, push play, and you can do it. <laughs> Who would have sunk it? Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow, I'd like to call up the ushers this morning uh, and uh, collect today's offering. And then we're going to, after we collect this morning, we're going we're gonna, to uh, go through the, dis the doxology. My tongue's tied. Page 253. So, so, Father, we just ask this morning that you bless this offering. And bless all those who, who give this morning, uh, that it would... Be for your glory alone, Father. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Thank you. Thank you. 
again, uh, we'll, we'll sing the doxology, and then we'll go right into our praise singing. like to stand for the doxology. Praise, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy You'll turn in your, thank you. If you'll turn in your song books to uh, number 227, Praise Him. This is where I'm going to sit down. Jesus. 
be reading today from the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Before I, before I do that, Father, Father, help me to preach your word. Father, bless this, bless this service and all those who are here. It's for your glory, for your glory alone, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, if you'd like to follow along. Forgive me. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of the power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 
Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them. That love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit of for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For he hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Today's message is entitled The Spiritual Mysteries of God's Power. The Spiritual Mysteries of God's Power. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed in the world, received up into glory. Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Jesus is the foundation that God's spiritual mysteries are built upon. In Isaiah 28, verse 2, Jesus and his power are described. It states, Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which has a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. And in verse 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. There comes a point, there comes a point in all of our lives that we will want answers. We will want to know the truth about life 
about our purpose here on earth, about eternity, about eternity, and about our life after death. In that search for answers, we will eventually be confronted by the truth. The truth, which, which happens to be found in Jesus Christ, the very Word of God. John chapter 1, verse 4. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus. Jesus. God's word can be found preserved for us in the Holy Bible, and through prayerful reading and study, we will come to know the truth who is Jesus Christ. He will guide us by directing our path through life in the way that we should go. We must seek Christ for all things calling upon him for the answers that we have, calling upon the Holy Spirit for comfort and guidance through this, this time we have. In 1 Corinthians verse 2, or I'm sorry, in verse, 1 Corinthians chapter, do it again, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 12 to 13. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We must put on the mind of Christ while walking in the Holy Spirit, so that we do not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Jesus proclaimed that he was here to do his Father's work, that he must be about his Father's business. He let everyone know that there was no time to waste. Everywhere Jesus went, he denied himself, lifting up the name of his Father in heaven. He taught the lessons that would lead us to heaven, that would reconcile us to his Father if we would only believe on him. He also explained and taught about hell so that we would understand that no one is guaranteed eternal salvation unless they believe on him, on Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, who gave his life as a ransom for many, paying their sin debt in full by the shedding of his innocent blood that day. Those that refuse to believe on Jesus Christ, those who refuse to believe on Jesus Christ are condemned already, the Bible tells us. They are condemned, and they will be cast into the fiery pit of hell, which is dug for that devil and his angels and the wicked who fail to repent. Not my words. <laughs> Not my words. As we begin to grow in wisdom and knowledge through reading God's holy word, our sins and trespasses, our lusts, and our boastful pride will become more and more evident to us. As one by one, our sins are illuminated by the light of God's truth. Jesus, Jesus, the light of all men. Jesus, he lights our pathway. He is the way, he's the truth, he is the life, amen? If we are to grow in our walk with God, if we have any desire to please him, 
to be his disciples, to love him, our spirits within us will be compelled by the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to confess our sins to the Lord, to acknowledge our sins, to understand and turn away from our transgressions, our fleshly lust and desires, our selfish, prideful thoughts and ways. We must, we must repent, turn from our evil ways, and turn to Christ to live. It's very simple. All these destructive actions, all these thoughts, can only be cleansed and forgiven by the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed that day on the tree of Calvary, giving us the opportunity, giving us the opportunity to be saved. We must understand that if we are against Christ, if we do not turn to Christ, if we deny Jesus, he will deny us before his Father. We will have no place in heaven. We will be cast into hell. <coughs> I want you to take a moment and think back through the history of your life, how you shaped yourself alone, without, without God, without Christ. How far did you get? How far did you get before you fell? How far did you get before you realized that you had actually gone nowhere. Nowhere. Except maybe backwards. Backwards. Maybe you fell in the ditch. Now how much more time, how much more time are you willing to waste in your life before you understand that there is no other way? There's no other way but through Jesus Christ. There's no time left I, want you, I really want you to think about there's no time left. What does that mean? What does that mean? You plan your day. You've got 24 hours a day. You plan it, right? We're going to do this. We're going to go here. We're going to meet up over here with our friends. You've got it all planned out, don't you? Well, I'll tell you who's got the, the ultimate plan for you. He's the one you should be seeking after for what you're doing in a day. Yeah. There's no time left. You may turn around and come down with an illness, die, get hit by a train, fall out of the sky in your plane. You don't know when those things are going to happen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? There's really no other way for us. There's no other way. We must not put our wisdom above the spiritual mysteries found in God's word. For the wisdom of the world comes to nothing, to naught. The wisdom of man is vanity and vexation, the Bible tells us. Vanity and vexation. Everything we do, everything we work for, everything we say for, everything we think we're doing is for the, you know, the right reasons, we store away our, our life for what? We store away our money, our goods. Look at me. Hey, I got a good job. Got a, look at my car. Look at my boat. Look at my house. Look at my life. Is that going to get you into heaven? No. No, it's not. It's not. You can't take it with you. You've heard that. You can't take it with you. 
Can't take it with you. It's really just a waste of time. <laughs> it's really just a waste of time. Yeah. We should be we should be seeking daily Christ. We should be reading his word, following after him, picking up our crosses, right? Denying ourselves. <coughs> Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these other things will come, won't they? Yeah. Lay not up your treasures here. Right? Right? He has a place for us. He has gone away and prepared a place for us, believers. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I can't imagine. I can, I can only imagine. Yeah. I don't care how much smarts we got, how good we are building stuff, fixing stuff. It all goes away. It all goes away. It all goes away. But you know what lasts forever? The Word. That's right. How do we know that? Because the Bible tells us that. The Bible tells us so. You've heard it, right? The Bible. Basic instructions before leaving the earth. Everybody wants direction, right? Here it is. Pick it up. Don't say you don't know. That's a cop out. We're all looking to find the answers, aren't we? Aren't we? I'm not going to point at anybody, but aren't we? I know I am. I know I was. Yeah. And where did I look? Where did I look? Everywhere else. Everywhere else, but right here. My guidebook. Our guidebook is right in front of us. Pick it up. Open it up. Read it. We must understand that we cannot fill ourselves with joy and happiness. We cannot replace our heart of stone with the heart of flesh. Only He can. We cannot renew our mind and our spirit through our own works. Only He can. Only He can. Trying to do so in our own will, of our own power, will leave us wanting. It will leave us desperate, seeking relief. Where do, where do we, where does our help come from? Where? From the, Bible, from, from the Word, right? From Jesus Christ. Where does our help come from? We can only find true satisfaction and fulfillment in our lives when we become, when we become willing to call out to God through His Son, Jesus Christ, in humble, in humble repentance as we turn away from our sins, asking God, Asking God to heal us, to renew the right spirit within us, to cleanse us of our sins. And this all can be granted to us only, only through Jesus Christ, by the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, Jesus. Jesus tells us in John chapter 3, verse 3, that Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What does that mean? What does that mean? We die. We die to ourselves. We die to ourselves and we're reborn. We're renewed through God, through Jesus Christ. We're reborn. We become a new man, a new woman in Christ. We turn away from those things of the old that we sought after, that we, we fulfilled our lives with. We turn away from that and we turn to the only answer. We become reborn. We become reborn. We become new creatures. You know, 
I remember. I, I remember the the old Mark. Yeah. Stacy, my wife, remembers the old Mark. Yeah. How, how can I forget? I can't. I, I know the difference now, though. I know the difference. That old Mark got buried. Yeah. He's buried. This is the new Mark. Praise God. I praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Through His Holy Spirit, I've been reborn. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 teaches us, it's for by grace are we saved through faith, and that, and, and that not of ourselves, yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. We can't do it on our own. You can't save yourself. You can't do it. I've seen it over and over and over again. People, you know, helping the little old lady across the street. Whatever. You know what I mean. Good works. Lots of money. Pay. You know, here you go. Buy that. I'll buy that for you. I'll do that for you. See that, Jesus? See that, God? I don't do it. You're just wasting your time. But you don't have much left of. Think about it. I spoke to a lady the other day about, you know, go to the beach, pick up a handful of sand. Yeah. How many lifetimes, did you, how many generations did, can you hold in your hand? Ours is but just for just for a split second. Some of my elders out there can tell me, well, it was just yesterday. It was just yesterday. It was just yesterday. Now look, look at how much closer we are today than yesterday. And the Bible tells us that we are not promised our next breath. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? We must pray without ceasing, calling upon Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ to deliver us from our transgressions, from our sins, from our filthy tongues, from our filthy tongues, our ways that lead us to destruction. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof, are the ways of death. We must understand that without Christ, we are filthy, broken, and unfixable. The Bible tells us that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon Jesus the iniquity of us all. We are in desperate need of a Savior. We are in need of repair, to be set right, to be reconciled, to be reconciled through the precious blood of Christ. Precious blood of Christ. The Bible tells us that it is appointed once to a man to die. And then comes the judgment. Have you read that in your Bible? The Bible tells us it is appointed once for a man to die. After that comes the judgment. On the day of judgment, we must be found covered, covered, washed clean by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ that he shed for all of us. Or we will be given our just punishment. We will be condemned and we will be cast into the pit, the eternal lake of fire, where there will be crying and gnashing of teeth, weeping. And this is, this truly is the spiritual mystery of God's power. This is a great mystery to those who are outside of Christ. To those who are outside of Christ, 
those outside of God's word. It is foolishness. His word is foolishness. But to those who are saved, it is the power of God. It is the great, one of the great mysteries of God's power. Yes. These are the words we boldly speak. God's words, we speak them boldly as we as being believers. These mysteries of God's spiritual power that we share through preaching of the Holy Word when we proclaim Jesus Christ and the great things that he has done for us, we proclaim these things. It truly is a mystery to me how God took me from where I was and put me where I am. It is a mystery. I shouldn't be here. Only by his love, his mercy, and his grace who we find through Jesus Christ are we here. Amen? I really, I truly believe this. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. This is not our home. No. No, this is the lesson time. The walking time. Like Jesus was here, right? Now he's gone into heaven, but he's, he's with us. He's alive. He's alive. Let us realize that the proclamation of God's word can only be understood through the spiritual wisdom of God's power, which is, excuse me, which is the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. 7 through 8, the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. We must be bold. We must be bold. We must build a solid foundation on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his finished work. We must build line by line, precept upon precept from his holy word, so that when the word of God is proclaimed and questions arise as to why we reclaim the name of Jesus Christ, why we preach it all, we will be able to give an answer that is approved by God because we'll pull it straight from his word. Straight from his word. Not our opinions, not our views, but straight from the Holy Bible. And that not only answers others, but it answers our questions as well. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asketh you a reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For Jesus is the rest wherein ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. You will be able to share the joy, the confidence, the understanding, the freedom found only in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Lamb of God, who came to take away the sins of the world in spirit and in truth. And remember, before you were set free, before you were redeemed, you were a refugee. You were lost. 
You were lost. You were a stranger in a foreign land. Your pathway only led to destruction. Your pathway only led to destruction. Before Jesus Christ, you were condemned by God's perfect law because you could not follow it line by line or precept upon precept. Trying to follow God's law, you would fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. No one can perfectly obey God's law. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen? Thank God for Jesus Christ. That is why we should thank God for Jesus Christ. And I do. And I'll do it every day, every second of the day. I thank God for Jesus Christ. And remember, my friends, our tongues are the most powerful gift that we have been given by our Creator. Our speech must proclaim the name of Jesus Christ as we have been commanded to do in His Holy Word. Failure to share this wonderful, glorious truth of the saving power of the finished work of Christ will lay the blood, will lay the blood of the lost upon us. Be aware. Psalms 51, verses 13 and 15, through 15. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness, O Lord. Open thou my lips of my mouth, and they shall show forth thy praise. It is through the spiritual understanding of God's power that true freedom is found as we surrender to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We will want to share this freedom with others and not keep it to ourselves. And when you call upon God's Holy Spirit to empower you to proclaim the word of Jesus Christ, no mockery, no, no weapon formed against you, no monster, no giant, no giant shall overcome you as you stand with God, knowing that spiritual, knowing the mystery of God's spiritual power is found through Jesus Christ alone. Amen? Through Jesus Christ alone. Christ is the only way. Christ is the only way. Are you trusting in Christ today? Are you? Are you trusting in the spiritual mystery of God's power to sustain you until the end? And are you sharing this truth that you've been given with others? Well, I hope so. <laughs> and that's enough of this. But God bless you all. I love you all. And remember, Jesus Christ, he's our Savior. He took the time out on the cross for all of us, each one of us. Look at your neighbor. He died for your neighbor. No matter what they look like, no matter where they came from, no matter what color they are, no matter what religion they are, he took the time out. He thought enough of you, thought enough of you to die on the cross to give you salvation. And all you have to do is turn to him. Believe in him. Trust in him and everything else will come. Give yourselves up today to Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Love you all. Now, before we leave and have cookies and coffee, let's stand up and praise him through song. And this is a great one. Uh, 485. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Amen? <laughs> God bless you all. Miss Mabel, whenever you're ready. So
everybody. God bless you. Stand up for Jesus. He stood up for you. He took the time out for you. Come on now. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Mabel.